Hello guys, in this video we'll discuss Slint UI journey in Rust. In a previous video we did discuss Slint behind the scenes Slint with Rust, set up a dummy project. In this video we'll dig more in Slint, learning about Slint structure, properties, components, building custom components, handling events and much more. So there is lots to cover in this video, make sure you stick around and watch till the end. If you haven't checked out my last video on Slint, it should be popping somewhere on right top. Make sure to click it, watch it before moving on to this one. And if you are new to this channel, there is a link to my discord in description. Make sure you join it and also subscribe to this channel because we do cover tons of stuff here related to Rust. We'll use Slint path for this video as the focus will be on Slint, uncover the secrets of Slint. We have already compiled and worked with Rust. So in this video, let's learn more of Slint. So in the future videos, we can build on top of our knowledge. The core part of Slint language are elements and components. Technically, they are the same thing, but let's try to understand. So right here, we have a component demo and inside, let's say we have an element as text with text as hello world. And we have our text rendered. Now elements are basic blocks that are part of Slint language. So text, we didn't define text, but it's predefined in the Slint language and we just used it. While components right here, which also known as widgets, are larger items that are built up from multiple elements and properties. So as you can see, our demo has a component which is text and then let's say it has a preferred height as uh, 160px and boom similarly we can add other properties as well so this is how we have our component inside we have our uh, elements and properties now components are larger blocks and uh, element is a basic building block while properties we have in our component to give more uh, style or meaning to our components. Now let's uncover bit by bit components, elements, properties, events, and then we move further. So we can add our component by simply saying component and the name of our component. So let's say as main as the main component. And then we can export right at the end, just like how we do in uh, uh, in react or similar other uh, front-end uh, frameworks or we can export directly right here so this export means now component is available outside man slint for other uh, files to use this component and then we can inherit properties of other elements so we can use built-in ones let's say uh, window so i inherit window here and then i set uh, some preferred height as uh, 100px and preferred width as uh, 200px and boom we have our main component up and ready and we can pretty much build any ui with components properties and elements so right here we have some built-in properties as all components share some common built-in properties like you know width or uh, color and stuff while there are some user defined properties as well let's look into those let's take this example as we try to understand properties access modifiers so right here we have our main component that inherits windows and then we have our hello world component which has a text now what if we want this text to be dynamic instead of just the static text we want the users or the consumers of this component to pass in the text so let's add the property and to add a property we can just use syntax property and the type so let's say we are using string and uh, user input let's call it user input and we can just use it and right now since there is no value assigned so we can also add a default which is hello world boom as you can see as we type it just renders hello world but wait a minute now 
the original goal was to pass the value from outside like the from the consumers or the users of this component so let's try that now we have our component and let's try to access user input and we pass a value as uh, subscribe but we get an error and that is because as you can see cannot assign private property user input because by default when we add a property in our component that is private and we used to we need to use access modifier to expose that to other components or restrict uh, the access so to allow users or consumers of hello world component to pass in the value we have to add an access modifier here which is in and then we are able to get user input pass the value and as you can see the value is changed to subscribe and now whatever i change it from hello how are you whatever i change it to it is replicated immediately because now we are allowed to pass input with access modifier as in let's look at another example to understand out access modifier so we have a button component with property as out modifier and then we have an event handler clicked and we just do increment the value and then we just display here in this text area as the total count now as we click the count keeps on increasing now remember in in we discussed that the property value can be passed from the consumers of this component whereas out the value can only be set in your component the readers or the consumers of this component can just read the value so basically it's the read only access to your users or consumers whereas in it allows to write to your component basically pass in the value so let's say if i change it to private it's no longer readable if i change it to in it's readable but your component now cannot modify it your component can only modify a out but wait what if i need the value to be passed to my component from the users or consumers and also i want to modify as well we just understood which is not possible if i keep the property as private in or out then let's say here i want to pass the initial value as 10 instead of getting the default value which is zero so as you can see i get an error here saying cannot assign to output property so what can we do so there is another access modifier which we can use in this case which is in out so what happens is when you do in out now i can pass the initial value as you can see it's set to 10 and when clicked i can modify and i can read as well so basically this helps the access to be well controlled you have prop private you have in you have out and you have in out and just like any other language we can have conditions in slint as well so let's say in our if we want to add if value is uh, i don't know greater than 12 then only we want to decrement otherwise keep on increment so let's say right here we add this block and we add this block as uh, minus equals to one and now we have our component we click the button and after immediately after 12 as you can see the value keeps on decreasing and then again because it's less than 12 then again we keep on incrementing so basically you can have this conditional blocks as well along with all the primitive types we can have an array like an array of integer or an array of objects just like in this example and then we can access land or we can access the elements so that's it for this video guys i hope you guys understood all the concept of component elements properties uh, in the future video we'll cover more advanced topic like functions callbacks and state management uh, creating stateful applications and stuff so make sure you are subscribed to the channel i'll catch you guys in another video with another interesting topic until then bye, -bye.